with Hill Country Hands. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. Today's video is going to be remedies for mastitis and my experience with mastitis and just some tips on how to feel better faster. If you're new to my channel, I do motherhood lifestyle videos. I do new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Please hit the subscribe button if you like this video and the notification bell so you know whenever I post a new video. And let's get into today's video. This, I want to start by just giving some information about mastitis and then I will go into the remedies that I have, the tips, and then talk a little bit about my experience with it. Mastitis is an infection of the breast tissue and inflammation. It is usually caused by a clogged duct. Uh, usually your clogged duct just gets so bad that it turns into mastitis. It can happen very quickly or it can slowly progress and just get worse and worse and worse and develop into mastitis. It is most common the first couple months of breastfeeding, but it can happen at any point while breastfeeding. And it is more common to get mastitis again once you've already had it once. The symptoms for mastitis are pretty much like flu-like symptoms. Some people experience different things. With me, I had a 101 to 102 fever, nausea, chills, body aches, one of the worst headaches I've ever had, and I suffer from migraines and have headaches a lot. So for me to say one of the worst I've ever had, it was so awful. And then I also had breast tenderness and pain in certain spots where the mastitis was. It felt like a small ball on my breast and in that area it was hot to the touch and red. Um, so most people do feel like it's the flu mixed in with breast pain. So whenever I went they did test me for COVID because of everything that's going on and since I had a pretty high fever but it ended up just being mastitis and I was shocked at how bad I felt and how sick I felt because I'd heard a little bit about mastitis but I didn't ever develop it with my daughter and I didn't know too much about it. I was completely shocked how awful I felt. And if you have it and you're watching this video, I'm so sorry, I feel for you. It's, it's an unbearable pain, but it will get better with time. Make sure that you don't stop nursing or pumping because that will make it worse. A lot of people, um, when they get it, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't ever wanna have this again, so I'm going to end my breastfeeding journey or pumping journey and they stop, you need to at least continue to breastfeed and nurse until after you are over the mastitis and then if you wanna make that decision to stop nursing or breastfeeding, then do that at that time. But don't stop during the mastitis, it will make it much worse. So I'm going to go over some remedies that I have. I also just want to throw in there, I'm not a doctor. I am just sharing my experience with you. You need to go to the doctor. I went to the doctor right away whenever I had the 102 fever. Um, and if you feel sick enough, you'll know if you feel sick enough. Um, but you should always consult your doctor if you're able just to call your OB and see if they can call in a prescription or give you some tips over the phone or if you need to go to urgent care. I went to urgent care, but always seek a doctor's medical opinion and medical advice. I'm just sharing my experience and a couple home remedies to do. I did go to urgent care. They did give me a shot of antibiotic and an oral antibiotic and I got checked out, which you should always do. So just wanted to throw that in there. Some of these tips I got from the doctors, some of them I got from other moms on Instagram or friends. So I got them kind of all over the place. Uh, but one of the big ones is hot compresses, whether you go and take a hot shower and just let the hot water run over your breasts and stay in there for a while, or you can get a like wet a dish towel and put it in the microwave for like 10, 15 seconds and heat it up. It won't stay very hot for very long probably, but you can do that or you can run a washcloth under the hot water and put it on there. Anything to warm it. Uh, if you have a heating pad, you could try that. I used these Lanish 3-in-1 Breast Therapy. My best friend got me these whenever I was pregnant with Mackenzie and these are amazing. So it fits right around its perfect size. It fits right around. You can actually wear these while you're still nursing or you're pumping. 
So you can either put this in the freezer or you can put it in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds and it'll get hot. So for mastitis, I warm is what is going to help get the milk flowing and help unclog those ducts and just try to get rid of that mastitis. I know some people do recommend cold after you pump, so do the warm before you pump or before you nurse, and then some people will do the cold. I just did warm and it helped me a lot. It makes it feel better and it's also therapeutic. It's helping resolve the mastitis. So make sure you're doing hot compresses constantly, like as much as you can. I would say at least every couple hours, if not more. I will link this in the description. It's amazing, you can get it off Amazon. So Motrin is the next thing. It will help with inflammation and pain. Another thing that I did was I took some Benadryl or some Motrin PM just for the drowsiness, just to kind of help me feel a little bit better. Being a little bit drowsy whenever you're in a lot of pain does help a little bit with your pain sometimes. And I would just stay on top of the Motrin. I wouldn't wait until you're in so much pain that you can't handle it and remember to take it again. I would set a timer for a couple of days and just take it around the clock as often as you can just to try to um, stay on top of your pain. The next thing is massage. So you can massage around where that lump or that um, spot is and it's gonna hurt, just do it as tolerated. Just, you don't have to do it super rough or anything like that, but just massaging it kind of tries to work that out and get that milk flowing and resolve that mastitis. You can do it or you can try to get like your husband to do it. I had to get my husband to do it some because I just couldn't stand to do it myself because it hurt so bad but it is helpful. That is something the doctor recommended that I do. This next one is probably the most important. It is to pump or nurse as often as you can, at least every two hours, if not more. Um, just if you're exclusively just nursing, just have your baby to your breast and just let them eat as much as they can, uh, especially on that affected side if it's only one side. Most of the time mastitis is uh, typically on just one side, so have them nurse on that one side and if you can just pump on the other side or just, but as much as you can tolerate it, as much as they want, if they're not nursing enough then you need to be pumping a ton because you need to just get that milk flowing to resolve that mastitis. The next two are common with any kind of illness. You need to get a ton of rest and you need to drink a ton of fluids. So with mastitis, I felt exhausted. I was so fatigued. I've been fatigued because our newborn hasn't been sleeping great, but I was so, so exhausted, so tired. So it's your body's way of saying like, you need to rest, you need to slow down um, and you know, to help your immune system and help you recover quicker with any kind of illness or injury or anything, you need rest. So make sure that if you can, get some help with the baby or the rest of your children and just stay in bed and rest as much as you can. And drink as much fluids as you can. Make sure it's, you know, water, juices, teas, healthy drinks. Um, so not caffeinated drinks and stuff like that. Make sure it's stuff that's good fluids for your body. Another thing is to take extra vitamins. So take some vitamin C, make sure you're keeping up with your multivitamin just to help your immune system bounce back faster. Another vitamin that I had a couple of friends recommend to me was this sunflower lechen. I think I'm pronouncing it right. And it is supposed to help thin out your milk a little bit so that ducts don't get clogged and that way you don't get mastitis. But if you already have it, it also helps to just thin out that milk and help you get over the mastitis. I did notice when I started this though that my milk supply did drop a little bit. So just be careful with that. I didn't continue taking this once I got over the mastitis. I do have a good friend of mine and she takes it daily to prevent mastitis. She's never had it but it's helped her, it's, she was getting clogged ducts and it helped prevent her from it ever turning into mastitis, but it affected my milk supply some, so I might just try taking less of it. I was taking four of these a day, so I might just go down to like one or two a day and see if that helps, because I would like to prevent it from ever happening again, because it was so awful. 
but I don't want my milk supply to suffer because of it. But while getting over the mastitis, I did take these. And I think that this is a big reason that I started feeling better. Because I didn't start taking these until the mastitis, I'd had it for a few days already and nothing was helping. So again, check this out. I will link it in the description. As with anything though, if you're taking any kind of supplements, check with your doctor before taking them. I did all these remedies, they do help, but I did have to be on an antibiotic and I was on an antibiotic for three days and it wasn't helping. I did, my fever did break, but I still had the horrible headache and everything else going on, the flu-like symptoms, the pain, the redness. So I ended up having to go back to urgent care and they switched my antibiotic to a different one. They say sometimes that with mastitis, it's hard to know which antibiotic to prescribe, which I guess antibiotics gonna help with the bacteria. So they did switch it and I got better after that. But I also started this at that point. So I really think that this is what helped a lot as well. So I was on two antibiotics for about two weeks, a week and a half. And I, they did give me a shot of an antibiotic at the urgent care of Rocephin. And that helped a lot because I felt much better for the first day home. And then I started feeling bad again, kind of whenever that first antibiotic wasn't working. But a lot of times you do need an antibiotic. I know a lot of people try to cure it naturally without taking antibiotics, which I think is great if you're able to. If you don't have that high fever and you have the other symptoms, try some of the other stuff. Call your doctor, see if they can just give you some tips before having to go to the antibiotic. I know it's not good to be on antibiotics, but I was so sick. There's no way that I would have gotten over it without the antibiotics. Those are my tips on how to get through having mastitis, make it more comfortable, help resolve mastitis. But a big thing is, is once you've had mastitis, is to try to figure out why you had it. How did you get it? Why did you get it? Because like I said before, once you have it once, it's more common for you to have it again. So if you figure out why you think you got it, then you can try to prevent it from happening again. One way to prevent it would be possibly taking these daily. So with my mastitis, I think it was a combination of I wasn't nursing enough because Hunter had started sleeping a little better at that point. He's back to not sleeping so great. But he had a couple of days where he did a three or four hour stretch of sleeping. And before that, I was feeding him every 30 minutes to an hour and a half. So I think during those couple nights where he slept better, I wasn't feeding enough. I should have been getting up and pumping if he's sleeping through the night. And the other thing is we went to the river and I had on a uh, strapless bathing suit top and it was tight and I shouldn't have worn that. I wore that for a few hours and having tight clothes can cause clogged ducts, which then can cause mastitis. So make sure your bra is not too tight. Make sure that if you put something on and it's it's too snug and if your breast starts hurting change it I should have changed it right away I noticed whenever I put the bathing suit on that it was too tight but I really wanted to wear it and we were leaving to go to the river and the whole time we were there it hurt and I didn't think anything of it came home and then I started feeling sick so I think it's the combination of those two things so I'm going to try to really avoid those two things. Make sure I'm pumping and nursing enough and don't wear anything tight. Just a couple of tips to finish the video. So nurse frequently, no tight fitting clothes. Make sure your immune system is good. Keep up with fluids, rest, vitamins. Just keep yourself healthy. That'll help prevent mastitis. And also another one is good hygiene. So make sure that you're showering often, cleaning your breasts. I know you're not supposed to really use um, soap where the baby's going to nurse, but just make sure you're clean. And we've been giving my um, baby like gas drops and stuff like that. My husband thought maybe the little medicine takers that we were giving him weren't clean enough. So anything that is going into baby's mouth, whether it's passies, bottles, medicine takers, make sure all that stuff is really clean, make sure your hands are clean. So just keep up with good hygiene and that will help also prevent the spread of bacteria. The second time I went into urgent care, they said that, um, you know, it could be just some kind of bacteria in the baby's mouth and transferring it to my nipple, which is causing the mastitis. 
If your baby has thrush, which is yeast in the mouth, you're more likely to get mastitis as well. So just some things to think about and some tips, and I hope that this helps you get through mastitis. I'm so sorry if you're experiencing that right now. I feel for you. It's so awful. If you have any questions for me or just need to vent about it, uh, leave a comment down below. I would love to chat with you about it and give you any kind of advice and support that I can. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe.